Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Push Square. Once again, you've caught me talking about that beautiful white tower, that beautiful next-gen box that Sony put out towards the tail end of 2020. It is, of course, the PlayStation 5. And regardless of whether you've managed to track one down or not, you may not have actually decided if the PlayStation 5 is for you. So today, we've got something very special planned. We are merging universes. This is the Avengers Endgame of, well, between Push Square and our sister site, it's Nintendo Life, and from Nintendo Life, I am pleased to join by none other than hello there, lovely people himself. It's Alex Olney. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm, Alex. I know we're taking you out of your comfort zone here today. We're talking about PlayStation. Are you excited to get stuck in? I am. I mean, you say it's out of my comfort zone, and professionally, yes. But I've I've got a PS4 <laughs> Pro. I love it. You know, so oh. I'm not I'm not a I'm not against the old Sony side of things. No, no, exactly. And um, you didn't tell me you had a PS4 Pro. That's that's more than I ever had. So you, you, you're, yeah. you're more of a professional PlayStation 4 player than I, frankly, will ever be. Um, but, but you no. do somewhat trump me on the PS5 side of things, as I'm sure we're about to find out. Well, this is what I was going to say. This is what we're going to get into today. So I am basically, I obviously own a PlayStation 5. Alex hasn't been won over yet. So the subject of today's video, we're going to debate it out, see if I can win him around. But before that, if you aren't already subscribe to Nintendo Life. We also did a companion video to this one where Alex tries to win me on round to the Nintendo 64 slash Sega Mega Drive expansion pack. And if you want to hear that conversation, be sure to click the link in the description below. Leave those lovely guys a like over there and they would be lucky to have you as we are on Push Square. But enough of that, as mentioned, Alex, you don't have a PlayStation 5. Can I ask why? That's right, Aaron. Um, because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the reason I don't own a PS5 is because um, I own a Nintendo Switch. Um, in fact, I own several Nintendo Switches, as I I've one heard would of expect. It. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, I, I play a lot of games on there. I can't play all the games I want to on there. I also have an Xbox Series X, and I don't have time to play all the games I want to play on that. And I have a PS4 Pro, and mm. most of the games that are coming out for most, most, don't, you know, I know you're going to come back at me, <laughs> but most of the games that are coming out on PS5 are coming out on PS4 as well. And the Pro is um, kind of 4K. It runs things very well. I don't see any sort of like major exclusives out there that would draw me uh, draw me towards a PS5 when I've already got the um, the Nintendo Switch and the Series X. Right, yeah. So I was, I was wondering if you're going to come at it from that angle. So I can see that you've built up this brick wall, to use a metaphor, and I'm going to have my work cut out for me to try and knock a couple of those, sort of some holes through them to try and knock you down. Um, I've used reinforced <laughs> mortar. <laughs> oh, no. It's called stubbornness. It's, it's, the, it's the Battle of Helm's Deep all over again. Um, oh, I love Lord of the Rings. There you go. Don't you bring that up. We're going to get on a tangent <laughs> before we even start the blooming video proper. That's all right. That's all right. You can be the, I was going to say you could be the Boromir to my Aragorn, but Boromir has an ill fate. So let's say, well, I'll call you the Legolas instead. Um, uh, anyway. No, no, I want to be Theoden. You want to be Theoden? You can be I Theoden. Be Theoden. Then. Yeah. yeah. And Rohan will answer. But anyway. Indeed. I want to die <laughs> under a horse. <laughs> Okay, before it gets uh, progressively more bleak, PlayStation 5, Alex, I'm here to tell you why you should probably buy one. Providing you can find one, of course, because, you know, the you know worldwide semiconductor shortages, they aren't making things, uh, you know, as easy as they probably could be. But should the opportunity come up for you to buy a PlayStation 5, you, you're already a PS4 Pro owner. It's the only place to play blockbuster Sony exclusives in the best fidelity and quality possible. And 2022 is obviously going to be a great year for PlayStation should they stick to the planned release structure. You've got things like God of War Ragnarok, boy, Gran Turismo 7, vroom vroom, Final Fantasy 16 is a thing. Um, but, you know, <laughs> shortly coming up on the horizon, wink wink, uh, we've got Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, and there you go with this. And I know what you're going to say. Horizon Forbidden West, it's coming to PS4. Probably look really good on the PS4 Pro. Indeed it will. But will you be able to feel the fully, truly immersive sensation of, you know, bow, bow and arrowing those several robo dinos on the DualSense controller? No, you won't. You need a PS5, Alex. The DualSense controller changes everything, as does, you know, Sony's blockbuster lineup of Sony exclusives, which look can play best on PlayStation 5. 
Your thoughts. Okay, right. Well, for one thing, <laughs> as you've already said, it's already coming out on PS4, <laughs> on PS4, <laughs> and I've got a PS4 Pro, and yeah, it's going to look very tasty indeed. I actually have Horizon Zero Dawn. I haven't played it yet. Um, I got it for my, um, I want to say my birthday. No, no, no. I got it for my name day, which is kind of like a birthday, but it's a, an excuse to have another mini birthday. It's. Um, I believe uh, they celebrate sort of, that in Greece, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, possibly. It, it's in all sorts of um, European countries. Um, I've adopted it because my partner's half Polish. Um, ah, so br Bring the know. name day to the UK. Are you hearing this world? Come on. We need two days to be gifted a PlayStation 5 on. That's what I'm the, saying. The, it's very, very, very off topic, but slight, <laughs> slightly good fun. It's just as well that Alex has several name days because my partner, Sasha, Sasha is a form of Alex. So we technically, from a Polish point of view, oh. have the same name. Isn't that sweet? You were meant to be. Just like you were yeah. meant to, you know, buy It's a not PS5. like names are arbitrary or anything, or the <laughs> fact that Sasha is Russian in origin, but we won't get uh, into that. I had Latvian like housemates who used to call me Sasha, and that, I, I, I was just, no, that's not my name. Call me Alex. I'm, um, wondering, I'm wondering if that's got anything to do with Sasha 9 from uh, Psychonauts and Psychonauts 2. But, I've been uh, playing Psychonauts on my Xbox Series X. You see, I don't have time for a PS5. How dare you utter that word Argument here. over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand what you're saying. The PS4 Pro, it'll look lovely and shiny. You're not able to experience, you know, um, you haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn yet, so you're probably not gasping. Uh, well, I have play played Breath of the West. Wild, so, you know. And, and what, what on earth are you insinuating, Alex, that Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild are the same? They may have come out on the same day, I'm but they're totally they're different. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm saying they're <laughs> very similar. <laughs> How many robot dinosaurs does Breath of the Wild have in it? Can I ask? Uh, well, I mean, it depends what you define as a dinosaur. If you use dinosaur <laughs> in the sense of something very old and sort of like from the past, lots. Yeah. Guardians. What, what, very true, but do they roar at you? They might shoot at you. Do they, you know, make your life hell when trying to, you know, unite the various tribes of the post-post-apocalypse? Maybe they do. Uh, Let's not get they, into it. They don't uh, <laughs> roar, but they go... Bong. They do. They do send those uh, Joy-Cons rumbling, similarly to how Forbidden West is expecting to do with the DualSense controller. Now, honestly, Alex, have you tried, have you held the DualSense controller in your hands at all? I haven't. I'm genuinely interested to hear Ooh. more about it. So obviously, you pick up a PlayStation 5, what's the first thing that anybody should do? What's the first game that any uh, that anybody should play? The Push Square audience know this. You should, you pop in Astro, Astro Bot Rescue Mission, or Astro's Playroom, rather, and then you just experience the, the comfortable, the vibrant wonders uh, that it has to that it has to offer via the DualSense controller. You've got that excellent haptic feedback sending the rumbles through your palms as you walk across a sandy, stony desert beach, um, or as you jetpack across the waves that the adaptive triggers do a great job at providing resistance and um to quote another sony franchise and honestly alex like i think once or should you get a dual sense controller in the palm of your hands it might have the potential to change everything particularly in playstation 5 exclusives where it works wonders are you saying that the dual sense has haptic feedback in the sense that it, uh, it it conveys a more sort of detailed sense of rumble so for more immersion mm, mm. would I you say that this that, is like almost like rumble in high definition Oh, but it's Rumble, but it's Would so you much say more, Alex. This is HD Rumble. <laughs> I wouldn't say. I would say it's 4K Rumble. Is what I would say. <laughs> okay, we're upping it once more. You know, 8K is advertised on the PS5 box. There's only one or two games yet, but the the, the controller offers 8K quality sensations. And is, honestly, is the, is the 8K out of interest? Is that um, yeah. because I know there's one one game where it's red where it's rendered in 8k in system rather than being upscaled yeah. um, is that on the ps5 at all it's um the tourist yeah i think it is the tourist that is similarly to its release on series x it would be as well yeah that is currently the only 8k native game uh, out there to play but who has 8k televisions yet well, that's what I was gonna say. Why should I? Why should I get a PS5? Can it? it can it actually output 8K, or is it um, that it renders in 8K and outputs a sort of a, a lower resolution, but with anti-aliasing? I'd be really keen to see um, what games will support 8K in the future. Although I must admit, right now, it has no no need. Um, because I've only just got a 4K screen because I am a I'm a bit of a tightwad when it comes to upgrading. 
yeah. because I sort of I get I get used to what I like and I get so into the nitty gritty of things like color balance and things like that that when I finally have something settled on I'm like I don't want to tweak it this is good I'm leaving it at this and then the idea of getting a new one and doing all that again and not being happy with um any potential like magenta halos around people's eyes <laughs> um <Well> <laughs> Yeah, we are getting oddly into the weeds now, but I think that, you know, you need to future-proof Alex. If you buy a PS5 now, sooner than later, you do it now. So by the time that the true 8K games do come, you can experience it in all its glory, you know, well ahead of time. I know we've got Astrobot, uh, is it Playroom? Astro Astro's Playroom. Playroom. Astro's, Astro's Playroom, Playroom. okay. Because I've played the VR one, that's good fun. Um, mm. I like the refresh rate, nice and high on the PSVR. And the Hello. PSVR 2 I know is coming out, but I've, well, I haven't yeah, i have touched my PSVR except to dust it in about <laughs> 18 months. Um, I like it, I just, I just don't have a great deal of use for it. But um, one thing I am keen to know is what other exclusives like actual exclusives yeah. can you entice me over with so the playstation 5 exclusive lineup so far currently sits at i believe you've obviously got ratchet and clank rift apart which mm -hmm. is you know a true ps5 console exclusive looks ruddy beautiful running on the playstation 5 natively you're hopping between dimensions the rumble haptic feedback yes i use that word rumble is glorious you know it's got some of the best weapons in the series ever and all function differently depending on how hard you, score, you squeeze the R2 trigger. So there's always something new to discover and explore. That Again, it's just the great, it's, it's the great example of visuals and, and gameplay coming together, the two points I've already mentioned. So you've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, obviously a 3D mascot platformer with shooting elements, which I hopefully would appeal to a majority of the Nintendo audience, much like yourself. Um, and then you've got Returnal, which is the latest game from Housemark, kind of like a third person roguelike, which is bigger than anything they've really developed or worked on before, but pretty proves, you know, surprisingly addicting, providing you don't mind a bit of a challenge. Very arcade-like, arcade-like shooter. And then, I guess the last big PS5 exclusive from last year, though I'll hold my hands up, won't be exclusive for very long, and I know that, but currently, as it stands, the only place you can play Bethesda and Arcane's Deathloop is on PlayStation 5. Obviously, it's kind of immersive simmy. Again, it's got more roguelike elements, you know, tapping into the speed of the PlayStation 5's super-fast SSD, making full use of that. I don't believe it could physically run on a PlayStation 4, hence why it's exclusive next-gen only to PS5. Alex, am I winning you around at all? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> um, can you can you just remind me what is the RRP for a PS5? So the RRP for a, a standard disc PlayStation 5 console, Alex, is four four nine ninety nine. You could save yourself ninety quid by opting for the digital console version, but obviously I personally wouldn't recommend that because then you're locked into you know pretty much a set amount of memory unless you want to go through the fumbling process that is expanding your your storage. Um, yeah, what does, how does that sound to you? Four four nine. 449. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's too expensive for what it is. I mean, as I say, I recently bought a Series X, um, mm. which is which was the same price, I believe. Um, it was because they uh, were actually on shelves. Yeah. Well, um, I still <laughs> had to. I had no. It, it, well, that wasn't the reason. I got it because I got it because I wanted to play Halo Infinite, and I'm mm. well aware I could have played that on my Xbox One. But it was more an excuse than anything. Yeah. And I've been enjoying Game Tipped Pass. I've had edge. a great time with my Series X. But the, um, so the PS5 for £450 has three exclusive games well. and uh, nicked Rumble from Nintendo. <laughs> so it, it, obviously the three games I mentioned are the ones that just immediately jumped out to me, but you've also got things like Destruction All-Stars, which I'll come on to later as part of a separate point, um, which is online, you know, hero-esque kind of car combat game. Uh, you've also got Astro's Playroom, we've already talked about, and um, Demon Souls. I don't know if you're a hardcore, you know, action RPG fan, one of these Souls types, but Demon Souls is probably the best looking game on PlayStation 5 right now. It loads instantly, get to explore these worlds in, you know, a much crisper way than what the PS3 original ever allowed you to do. So yeah, you've got, you know, the, the, the selections creeping up, I will say. I, I'm I'm not um, poo pooing Demon Souls, um, even if it is strange to say, because you have to say Demon's Souls. But <laughs> um, you, I, I'm well aware that the remastered version is a PS5 exclusive. But that's that's the thing; it's the remastered version. <laughs> the original, which mm -hmm. is the same game, is well. available on. Well, it's the same game. <laughs> 
uh, is available on PS3. I will say it's not a remaster. I hate to be pernickety about this. It's a remake, you know, fully oh. from the ground up. It shares no okay. assets at all, hence why it looks so good. And then, you know, I'm looking at the horizon now, just the upcoming PlayStation 5 exclusive games. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is going to be PlayStation 5 only. Alex, will you be able to live with yourself if you aren't able to play the sequel to the hit game Marvel Spider-Man? Sorry, you just sounded like you're on an advert then. The hit games, <laughs> the Marvel game. Spider-Man. <laughs> Coming now to a PlayStation 5 near you. Um, I, I played through um, Spider-Man on PS4 and I really enjoyed it. I really did. But mm. at the same, I really enjoyed it. Nothing against the game per se. I mean, I've got a few niggles. The stealth sections, they can kind of get in the bin. The ones where you yeah. don't play as Spider-Man. The, the Spider-Man stealth sections, they're great, but yeah. I I don't need to run around as Miles or MJ, MJ except for like some, you know, it was fun for a bit, but then when you have to like sneak around at people who can't see the hand in front of their face, I just didn't get on with it. But you're um, talking about 10% of, not even that, of, you know, a wider experience that is absolutely. so smooth and sleek. Yeah, absolutely. But if if 10% <laughs> if 10 of your, of your dinner is moldy, <laughs> <laughs> you cut that bit off and you enjoy the other 90%. I agree, exactly. Alex. Exactly, yeah. And on top of that, with this sequel, <laughs> Insomniac would have learned their les lesson. You know, there's going to be less stealth sections. Maybe they even have got rid, you know. Maybe. But even so, I, I will have to see what it's like. Um, yeah. in, you know, sort of, I'll see what the review's like. If it's like, hey, yeah, this is great. This is more of the same. It's going to be hard to win me over because really? uh, more of the same is I've still got loads left to play of that game. I've completed the main story, but I've got loads that I can still go back and do. And well, it's really good fun, but I've got I've got such a backlog. Like, it's getting embarrassing. I've, I've recently got another two GameCube games for Christmas. Admittedly, Ooh. I've semi-completed one, um, Time Splitters Future Perfect, which is a my game I never, never played back games. in the day. Love um, Time I've, Splitters Future Perfect. Yeah, I had Time Splitters 2 and I played that to death, but never had Future Perfect. Must say, don't think the campaign is quite as good. Mm. We're getting off topic again. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, my backlog is game? enormous. Uh, Pikmin, oh, okay. which admittedly Pikmin. I've played to death. Okay. I, I get what you're saying, the backlog's enormous, but like I said, hopefully you would have cleared some of that backlog by the time Spider-Man 2 comes out. So I've covered the dual sense, covered the exclusives that are coming out. I don't think you've budged much, but I'm going to give you all I've got now. Have you heard of the PlayStation Plus collection, Alex? Is that basically Game Pass, but Sony branded? So that would be kind of like the layman's way of putting it, but the main way it differs from Game Pass is that you're not, admittedly, getting new games added. It's just an instant collection of 20 PlayStation 4 games that are only accessible once you pick up a PlayStation 5. Um, you know, and it's a great list of games. You've got Batman Arkham Knight there, you never played that before. Persona 5, that's, you know, over a 100-hour game if you want to play it. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. All these games, you know, high-quality AAA titles, Resident Evil 7, I could go on. They're all waiting for you on day one if you pick up a PlayStation 5 and haven't played it before. But if you're stingy like I am and you have played those games before, you trade in those uh, physical boxed copies of the PlayStation 4 versions, you put that towards future PlayStation 5 games and you enjoy the PlayStation Plus collection digitally. Uh, no, no, I can't trade anything in! <laughs> I've made that mistake before. Why do you think I've had to get Pikmin for a second time? Well, this is true. But I bet it was a nice surprise. Although actually, when you I think it Pikmin up. I lost. I didn't trade that in, but I did trade in a few games when I was um, in college and stuff like that. I regret every single one of them. If not mm. only for the fact that some of them I traded in to buy Fable Three. <sighs> Never played Fable, so I can't comment. But I'm guessing you didn't have a good time. It's fine, but it's not worth <laughs> trading in Super Mario 64 DS now, is it? We've all got those stories, haven't we? Um, but no, are you a PlayStation Plus member at the moment for your PS4 Pro? I'm not because I don't <sighs> have enough cores to... Um, oh, Alex. To, like, the games that I could play online, a lot of them, pretty much all of them, I can play on other systems like the Series X or the uh, mm. Switch. And uh, I'm already subscribed to Game Pass and Switch Online. And I don't really like subscriptions at the best of times. So adding a third to the mix doesn't really fill me with joy. 
But, but here's the thing, Alex, all this time you haven't been subscribed to PlayStation Plus, you could have slowly been building up your digital library of PlayStation 5 games. Because in addition to the, you know, the PlayStation Plus collection, the instant uh, selection of 20 games, um, you know, there's been a decent uh, list of PlayStation Plus editions for PS5 throughout the majority of 2021. Day One releases many of them as well. So Oddworld Soulstorm, well, not the greatest game, I'll admit, you know, it saves you having to pay for it outright. And if you were subscribed to PlayStation Plus, you can just hog you can just log into your account and kind of add it to your collection. Operation Tango, a really fun uh, split-screen-esque, although not really, sort of spy espionage game that's only uh, playable in co-op, similar to It Takes Two, actually, um, was given away as part of PlayStation Plus for free on day one to subscribers, uh, in addition to Destruction All-Stars as well. And, you know, regardless of whether you've got a PlayStation 5 or not at the moment, if you're in the PlayStation ecosystem, I always recommend, if you're subscribed to Plus, add these games to your digital libraries that when the day does come that you pick up a PlayStation 5, they're right there waiting for you. Bug snacks, Alex. Bug snacks. I'm talking about them bug snacks. You like Pokemon Snap? You will like bug snacks. <laughs> uh, how much is PS Plus out of interest? So PlayStation Plus is $6.99 a month uh, here in the UK, or $19.99 every three months, but the, your solid package is $49.99 for 12 months. A much better deal, if I do say so myself, than the $59.99 you'd be expected to play for Nintendo Switch Online. For Nintendo 64 games, I'm talking about new releases on day one, Alex, for £10 less per year. The £60 is for the family plan. Oh, you've destroyed my argument. Really. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, video over. That's it. Oh, never mind. But yeah, was that? do you think that's fair, <laughs> considering what I've said? Forty nine ninety nine. It seems fair. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say it screams an amazing deal to me, but we've all got our own ideas as to what is a good and isn't a good deal. Mm. But that also gets you 100 gigs of cloud storage, you know, exclusive discounts on the store. Uh, and obviously What's the cloud storage useful for? So in or for like saving your, you know, your save data to the cloud. So, and then if you were ever to change consoles, like you might do from your PlayStation 4 Pro to PlayStation 5, rather than have to start, you know, the lengthy process of getting your consoles to speak together, you just, you know, enter the menu, upload all your saves for your entire games library to the cloud and download it. Which is something that uh, the Xbox offers for free, even without a subscription. True, true. But, you know, let Xbox be Xbox. Xbox and Xbox. <laughs> this is PlayStation <laughs> Plus we're talking about. Plus, I, you know, I don't want to get too much into speculation, but there's rumours now that the benefits of PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus will be merged uh, sometime early this year. So that grants you, you know, an even larger access to a game library that doesn't involve games, um, you know, that were finding their feet in 3D for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but but and before uh, we get too much off topic um the last point i want to make you kind of hinted at it earlier but playstation vr 2 is hinted to be coming out later on and it is going to be playstation 5 exclusive i know you've got labo over there the nintendo labo headset i'm not sure what kind of is happening when you get your cereal box and you put it on your head i imagine there's something similar but um you, you mentioned you can play you breath a... of the wild and vomit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't advise it a hundred percent. No, but yeah, no. you said Labo so VR is fun as a as a as an idea. It's it doesn't hold water. Yeah, it's kind of like a almost tech demo. We was the impression I got, but you get you get none of that here. Obviously, you've got a PlayStation VR, and you said you really enjoyed it. This new iteration, you know, well, admittedly, it's not gonna you know. It's going to be an additional cost on top of the PlayStation 5. Um, you know, Sony are already showing indications that they're going to support it fully again with an exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn spin-off game. It's heavily rumoured that Half-Life Alex will be coming to the system and you get the great new, you know, inside-out tracking controllers as well. So you can leave your move ones and chuck them in the bin for good, like so many of us have wanted to do for so long. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's it. I won you out round with just PlayStation VR two alone. Yeah, I should have yeah, started no, the argument there. You convinced me. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed my time with PSVR, but I think the thing is, is that the games are very enjoyable, but there's nothing long term in there, and it's the sort of thing where I don't regret the purchase by any mm. stretch. But there haven't been nearly as many games as I anticipated for PSVR. Yeah. And I'm a little bit concerned that might happen again with PSVR 2. 
Are you, are you saying that Sony might release some new hardware and then abandon it early on in its life cycle, Alex? I don't know what you're talking about. There's no. I'm saying, remember the eye toy. <laughs> <laughs> and my dear, lovely, loved, beloved PlayStation Vita, RIP as well. Yeah. But we all had fun cleaning windows on the eye toy. What a great memory. <laughs> I remember doing that in a game shop. That was the only experience <laughs> I had with an eye toy, and I was like. There you go. That was odd. And then I moved on with my life. <laughs> Why do I have to look at myself in game? Nobody wants that. It's bad enough whenever the, the switch screen loads and, you know, your reflection's looking back at you. Uh, that's a scary thought. But anyway, Alex, <laughs> to sum up, my reasons why you should buy a PlayStation 5. It's the only place you can play Blockbuster Sony exclusive. We've counted five or six of them only on PlayStation 5 right now. <laughs> You've got the DualSense controller, which every game benefits from uh, that's on PlayStation 5. The PlayStation Plus collection and the rolling subscription, which is far better than Nintendo Switch Online, at least for me, from a value proposition. Obviously going to be different to you. And the promise of what PlayStation VR 2 has in store. Alex, have I managed to win you round at all? Um... <laughs> I would I I I I I'm not going to lie and say that I'm convinced. I'm not like going, "Oh, I need to get a PS5 now." Today, but yeah. at the same time I'm I would say that I am more open to seeing what develops in the future mm. whereas before I thought, "Ah, I've got my Series X, I've got my Switches, I'm fine." Yeah. But now I'm sort of thinking, "Well, we'll see. We'll see, shall we?" Interesting. Well, I'm glad to have, like, you know, pushed you a bit closer to the PS5 Edge just a little bit more. I, I think the issue we have now is, um, obviously, you've got the Series X, so you've invested in next-gen already somewhat, but we're still early on in the console's life cycle, unlike the Switch at the moment, where, um, you know, we're still in the... Because there's 100 million PlayStation 4 players out there, right? So you can't cut them off immediately with most of your exclusives. But we will reach a time, and we're already seeing that now with stuff like Final Fantasy 16 not coming to PS4, and obviously Marvel Spider-Man 2, Marvel's Wolverine, although it is a way off, not coming to PS4. So hopefully in the future, when the next time you're walking past, uh, I was going to say a Woolworths then, but they haven't uh, existed for years. There's a reference yeah, the for you. Yeah, thing they went under over 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the next time you're browsing the digital store shelves and you see a PlayStation 5, hopefully you'll think twice about it. And pick one up, hopefully. For a discounted price would be even better. Oh yeah, lovely. Well, anyway, guys, I think that just about does it for my this friendly debate between me and Alex uh, it, when I try to convince him to buy a PlayStation 5. Um, thank you very much for watching. And as mentioned, there is a Nintendo Life version of this sort of debate idea concept right there available for you to watch now. So be sure to find that in the description below. Click it and show the Nintendo Life guys some love. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you haven't already. And consider subscribing to the Pushware YouTube channel for everything else PlayStation related. However, until next time, from me and Alex, it's bye bye for now. What's the Sony equivalent of Dosh and the Giant? <laughs>